Hi guys, Ali here with a very exciting video about how to level up LLMs like ChatGPT beyond chatbots or language models and be able to interact with external tools and environment. When I say external tools and environment, the possibilities are endless and can include basic search to sending emails or even robotic actions. So stick with me as we learn about what is possible. The video is a bit long, so I would encourage you to use the chapter navigation by using links in the description or hovering over the progress bar. With a disclaimer that it's a general audience video, so you won't step into programming realm. But I assure you that if you want to go there, you would have all the knowledge to hit the ground running. I may soon make some videos on programming going forward as well on this channel. But for now, let's continue with this video. So far, we have explored tons of ChatGPT features in our ChatGPT feature series and how to creatively use the tool using prompt engineering series. But we have used the tool primarily as a chatbot and relied on either pre-training or custom training that we did ourselves to unlock some features. Although this unlocks a world of possibilities, the tool is changed, constrained, or whatever is the best word to describe it, to use its current knowledge and respond to you with text. Now, up until recently, there used to be a cutoff date for training the model, so if you ask it some question regarding an event that occurred past that date, it would simply be unable to answer. Similarly, the tool has been trained on public internet, which makes up its knowledge base. But what if you need to find some details not present on public internet, but on your internal network? Like whether there's a non-smoking room available on such and such dates at a particular hotel? It is again unable to service your query. And finally, what if you want to take some action on your behalf? Like, say, book the hotel room on given dates. It's utterly useless in current form as it is unable to interact with any external entity. It can only suggest what you need to do to book the room yourself. So suffocating and what a waste of potential, right? Hollywood has long normalized us to the idea of AI being able to act. So most of you watching this video, this won't be a novel concept. However, in practical life, this approach is full of potholes. When we come to envision the idea of AI acting, our first instinct is to visualize an evil robot trying to pull out a gun and trying shooting the hero or out of fantasy world a robot trying to clean a room. But before going that far, let's quickly evaluate the most primitive form of action that is trying to find information the model does not possess. Now just pause this video for a second and think, if I ask you a question which you don't know the answer to, but you're obligated to give me a good answer, what would you do? Say your boss sent you an email to ask if any train leaves to nearby city early morning so he can be there in time to see a popular tourist attraction. Your options are either to just reply with no, I don't know. And like sent. But if you are a sane, reasonable member of his team and respect him as your boss, you probably won't do so. Now this situation is not so different for you, the employee, and a chatbot like ChatGPT trying to respond to your prompt. Both of you don't know the answer. Now what do you do? And how? And most importantly, what would be a process you would follow to give a more informative reply than a simple, sorry, no idea? Please pause and think, then resume. Well, since you are a smart person, I'm sure you would try to find the train schedule online. That was easy. You would Google to find the train operator website, pull out the schedule, find the train, and then going one step further, you would check if there are seats available on that train. Easy, right? But would it be that easy for your grandfather who never learned to use the internet? Probably not. Unfortunately, same is true for the large language models, which have never been trained to use the internet, but they know how to use it, you would argue, and you would be right. But being able to walk up to the computer, opening browser and starting to Google is much easier for you than it is for a machine learning model, right? But that can change with your help. You can train the model to ask for your help whenever it needs some information. You query the information online, pump the answer back to the model, and Bob's your uncle. The example we took was really simple and you could do it yourself. But if it was a bit complex, where you could leverage models built in knowledge, like say the question from boss was, I want to read city X to see tourist attraction Y. What time should I leave home to be able to be done with my sightseeing tour by afternoon? Would require a much complex search for traffic routes and congestion, train schedules, timing for tourist attraction, queue lengths, busy hours and whatnot. Now, large language model must be aware of most of these since people complain a lot online and one of the entities that read such nagging complaints with interest are large language model crawlers. Also, it would be much easier for large language model to calculate the departure time than yourself. 
it would need help querying the latest train and attraction schedule though. But, and here's the important bit, it should be able to come up with a what to query on its own. All right, you agree to help the poor model, but wait, have you heard the camel and the tent story in which the camel shivering in the cold asks its owner to just let his head in in the warm tent, then the paws, then legs, and eventually the camel is fully inside and asks the owner to move out since there's no space for two bodies in the little tent? Well, coming back to the large language model, if you are helping in searching for information, you would end up helping out with strange schedules, querying busy hours for attraction, and eventually making the booking as well and sending email to your boss with departure and booking information with no guarantee he would be happy enough to give you a raise. Before going into details of how the prompt would look like, let's dig a bit deeper into how the whole process would unfold. All right, so far we have established that for most situations, a large language model like ChatGPT should be able to figure out a chain of thought, reasoning, or an action plan for what needs to be done to reach the end goal. It has figured out the what and all that is missing is how. To solve the given problem entirely on its own, the model needs access to a bunch of services, including search or Wikipedia, calculator, train schedule, booking system, and probably an email or SMS service. But since it's a model and still needs your help, its plan would need to look like a thought or plan, followed by an action request to you for external information, after which the model would pause and wait for your input. You would run the request, say a web query, and then input the results back to the model, say by a prompt, and model would resume its action plan until it is done or requires another action request to be processed. Finally, it would arrive at an answer and compose an email to be sent, which we would do on its behalf, but the subject, body text, etc. would be provided by the model. Isn't that a win-win for both of you? You can debate who did the heavy lifting here since you had to perform actions like the query and putting results back to the model, but can't deny that it saved you considerable effort. You leveraged the model's built-in training to figure out the action plan, intermediate steps or things to do, and since you are not an expert in commute calculation, the model would have taken several factors into consideration that you might not be even aware of, or for sake of your big ego, let's say you might have missed some of those by mistake. Now on part of ChatGPT, it had to do the hard work of coming up with an action plan using the pre-training and knowledge it has and incorporating all the required factors into consideration. If you have watched our video on chain of thought prompting, it would come up with the entire chain of thought that is reasoning paths to calculate departure time. It would also come up with associated acts to perform. And by acts, I mean request to you for external actions to perform with associated feedback, like putting such results back into the prompt. Finally, if you want to ensure that answer is based on multiple reasoning paths, you would ask model to perform chain of thought self-consistency technique for which we also have a video, and it would solve the same problem in multiple ways, which also means more acts, but you would have greater satisfaction that the departure time you're sending your boss to be more accurate, realistic, and grounded in facts. In case you're wondering when will I introduce the React pattern in this video, Good news is, I have partially introduced it already. Human intelligence is the ability to seamlessly combine task-oriented actions with verbal reasoning, a kind of inner dialogue with yourself as to how best approach a specific task. The research paper that introduced React Pattern used the example of cooking a dish in the kitchen, where you have a task at hand, we reason in language to track progress, handle exceptions, or adjust the plan according to situation and realize what external information is needed, like searching internet for how to prepare dough. We may also act like open fridge and check ingredients to support reasoning and answer questions like, which dish I can prepare with available ingredients. Synergy between acting and reasoning allows humans to learn new tasks quickly and perform robust decision-making or reasoning even under previously unseen circumstances or facing information uncertainties. The last point is what makes React prompt engineering techniques so powerful that model is able to react or adjust to novel situations or exceptions and adjust the plan according to new information. You can consider the large language model to be like a brain in a box, which can think independently, has all the knowledge to complete the task, but no organs to accomplish the task. To visualize, consider you can think, but have no body. 
how would you prepare the meal now? You can think what you need to do and the steps, but how would you know if the water is hot or you don't know how to prepare dough? What would you do? Well, you would still imagine stuff, aka hallucinate about it. Now consider we do give it a bunch of sensors and motor controlled limbs to operate. Now you would adjust your plan accordingly and use sensor input to guide motor actions. Your plan still needs to figure which motor and sensor to use at what time. This would create a think, act, observe sequence interleaved with your chain of thought, reasoning path, or action plan. This is what we call react pattern. All right, the paper provides a beautiful comparison between think only, act only, and react, which is short for reason plus act approach with two different examples. Please pause and have a look at these and admire how the reason plus act approach beautifully approach the problem at hand compared to the other two. We have seen chain of thought reasoning already for arithmetic, common sense, and symbolic reasoning tasks, but it is limited to thoughts and void of real world or external world information, which limits its ability to reason reactively or update its knowledge. This leads to fact hallucination and error propagation over reasoning process. React fixes that. It is a general paradigm to combine reasoning and acting with language models for solving diverse language reasoning and decision-making tasks. It prompts large language models to generate both verbal reasoning, traces and action plan pertaining to a task in an interleaved manner, allowing model to perform dynamic reasoning to create, maintain, and adjust high-level plans for acting, while also interact with external environments like Wikipedia to incorporate additional information into reasoning. So the most effective approach is combining React with chain of thought, allowing use of both internal knowledge and externally obtained information during reasoning. The best thing about React is it's intuitive and very easy to design, where humans can lay down their thoughts in language on top of their action taken. It is general and flexible and applicable to a variety of scenarios with varying reasoning needs, including but not limited to QA, fact verification, text game, web navigation, etc. It is performant, robust, and lasty. It is human-aligned and controllable since it uses opaque or visible reasoning, which can be interpreted and adjusted as necessary. All right, enough theory. Now that we are familiar with React, let's go back to our early example where you were helping out the large language model for external operations. Let's say we want to move you out of the picture and automate the process. We do so by prompting the large language model, say ChatGPT, with following addition to original prompt. If you are asked a question that either requires knowledge that you don't currently possess, or events that happened after your training cutoff date, or you need to send an email, or you need to query schedules of train today, or you need to book a seat on a train going from source city to destination city, you would do the following. You would run in a loop of thought, request, pause, result, and answer. Use thought to describe your thoughts about the question you have been asked. Use request to choose one of the external systems available to you and compose a request, then return pause. I will run the request for you and prompt with the results of executing the request. Answer will be your final answer based on the request. Your available external systems are schedule, for example, schedule, source to destination, Returns a list of trains going from source city to destination city today. Wikipedia, for example, Wikipedia for GPT. Returns a summary for searching Wikipedia. Booking, for example, booking, source, colon, destination, colon, departure time. Books a seat and train going from source to destination city at a given time. Returns a booking ID. Email, for example, email to recipient email subject subject line and body body text sends an email to recipient with given subject and body returns sent or fail now you can prompt the large language model or chat gpt with the same question about figuring out time for departure with added instructions to book a seat and send email to your boss this gives you an extent dry run of when and how it would use external tools for problem solving of course, it is relying on you for such operations, so you can feed it back fake data like made up train schedule or booking IDs, but you would be able to see how it uses React to creatively use these tools. Note also that if you ask it a question that does not require use of external tools like Wikipedia, 
as it can answer with its existing knowledge, it would not request you to run the unnecessary queries. Additionally, note that instead of prompt like above, you can also teach or train ChatGPT by examples, where we first give it an example of how to think action result for the task, where it is taught to use external tools to find information it does not have. Then you give it a similar task and prompt it to think, and it should follow along. It's the thought that counts. Important bit is it is applying its training to figure when to use external tools to get information it can't otherwise. It is problem solving the AI way, where it figures out the best course of action or plan to execute to get the task done, use the, the available external options it has to accomplish the task and filling the gaps. This approach called React also fixes hallucination problems since the model does not need to fill in using bogus information, but has ability to figure out the information using provided tools. Here, React allows to retrieve information to support reasoning, say from Wikipedia, while also use reasoning to target what to retrieve next, demonstrating a synergy of reasoning and acting. We want to teach large language model how to think through process and understand steps using other tools to get information, taking actions, and observing results. But aren't you tired of working for ChatGPT and running its errands already and thinking why can't this be automated so I can do something useful with my life? Well, you are in luck and it's time to introduce ChatGPT plugins. The term plugins in context of ChatGPT exactly means external tools. They are code snippets that enable ChatGPT to interact with the external world using their API. Please read more about plugins on OpenAI website. Note it is exactly the opposite of integrating ChatGPT via API in your code as plugins are controlled by ChatGPT, whereas you control ChatGPT using its API. Since the video is already too long, I won't be going into details of how to integrate plugins and you can read from the link in description where OpenAI describes how to install and activate them. Additionally, note that plugins are not available in free version of ChatGPT and are an option for paid versions only. At this time, you can use three plugins at max at a given time. Just like we discussed in quoting directly from the plugins page, when a user asks a relevant question, the model may choose to invoke an API call from your plugin if it seems relevant. ChatGPT leverages the description from the plugin manifest to decide when a plugin should be used in response to a prompt. But you haven't watched the React pattern video to be dependent on ChatGPT for using a plugin, right? You can instruct it to use a particular plugin, say for web query or hotel booking or making your prompts perfect, just like the examples we covered earlier. And by the way, Prompt Perfect is name of a very popular plugin as well. You can even write a plugin of your own. Again, something we will not cover in this video. There is a big and growing marketplace for plugins, so be sure to explore it. Large language models have been employed more and more as a policy model for decision-making, especially in an interactive environments. React also provides interpretable decision traces. Complex tasks with large action spaces require more demonstration to learn well. Note that this approach is not without its issues, and one should be aware there are no guarantees that ChatGPT would choose the right external tool or plugin when necessary or not when not necessary, will compose the right request, will process the response from external systems correctly, and so on. I hope you would be able to utilize React prompt engineering technique in real life with help of this video. If you liked, please like and share, and subscribe to be notified of exciting content like this. Thank you.